Hey folks, welcome back to All Up In Your Business. I'm attorney Aiden Durham with 180 Lawco in Colorado. And today I've got a very exciting topic for all of you talented musicians out there. I'm gonna talk about how you can protect your music using a little thing I like to call copyrights. Before we get into all that great stuff, if you are new to All Up In Your Business, welcome. Please subscribe. You can click that little bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video and check the description for links to additional information and resources. And while I am a lawyer, I am not your lawyer. The stuff I talk about in this video is not a substitute for actual legal advice. If you need help with any legal matter, you should consult with a lawyer who's licensed in your state. All right, before we dive in, I wanna start with a few of the basics of copyrights. A copyright is a legal right that grants the creator or author of a work exclusive control over that work. When we're talking about music, copyrights protect things like your original compositions, lyrics, and sound recordings. It gives you the exclusive right to distribute your music in all formats, whether uh, physical or digital, create derivative works or samples based off of your music, and to perform your music live. I talked about this a little bit in my last copyright video, but remember that copyrights and copyright protection, those are kind of automatic and they apply as soon as you create an original work like a song. Copyrights already exist, but registering the copyrights with the United States Copyright Office gives you a lot of additional benefits that you don't otherwise have. And with music in particular, that copyright registration, some of those benefits are gonna include things like increasing the leverage and protection and power that you have when it comes to making money from your music. So what is and isn't protectable by copyrights? Copyrights, of course, will apply to song lyrics and completed works like the songs, jingles, or maybe symphonic pieces, things like that. Copyrights do not apply to things like song titles, chord progressions, or incomplete or unfinished works. Those things you can't really protect with copyrights. A little, little tiny little tidbit here, not copyright related, but as a musical artist, you may also be able to protect your artist name with a trademark registration. So now let's talk about some of the steps involved in getting a copyright registration for your music. The first step and really the most important step is of course, creating the music, creating the work itself. You're gonna have to write it down, whether it's lyrics or maybe the music for your song, write it down in some form or make a recording of it. It's important that we have some tangible form of your work, whether it's sheet music or a recorded track. The copyrights and copyright protection only apply once your work, once the music or the song is affixed in some tangible form. So again, either write it down or make a recording of it. Once we have all that ready, we're gonna want to gather some of the necessary information and documentation that we'll need for the copyright application. A good place to start is by making a written list or a chart, write down the names of all of your compositions and the dates that they were created. Now this next step isn't totally necessary, but it is sometimes a good idea and can be helpful when it comes to proving authorship and originality of your creation, of your song or your music. We wanna make some kind of a time-stamped copy so that if the question ever comes up of did you actually create this you know maybe before somebody else did or did you actually create this originally was this your original creation we've got some timestamp copy to help prove that this can be as easy as uploading a recording or sheet music to an online platform like youtube instagram facebook or soundcloud or you can like email the files to yourself. Again, I, in either case, we're gonna have some timestamp of the time and date when that happened. So we can then prove, yes, this thing existed and I created it as least as early as this date. Or you can give a copy of the work to someone you trust, like a lawyer. I have a few clients who do this who write uh, maybe books or manuscripts or something, and they will send them to me for safekeeping, and that way there is some record of when these things existed. You've likely heard of something called a poor man's copyright, where you put the work in a letter 
mail it to yourself and then you keep it sealed for when you need it later. That way you have some, you know, date on the letter that you mailed. Like that's good again for keeping a time stamp and some kind of record of it, but there's really no like legal recognition in the United States of a poor man's copyright. It's still, it's okay to do. The important thing though is that we want some time stamping on your work. So then we're gonna move to actually doing the copyright application. And to do this, we'll go to copyright.gov, which is the official website of the United States Copyright Office. Now, there are two aspects to recorded music that we can protect with copyrights. There's the publishing copyright, which applies to written compositions. And then there's the master copyright, which applies to sound recordings. This is important because there are two different forms that we might use when we're submitting our copyright application. Form PA, which stands for Performing Arts. This is used for the underlying composition or music musical work. Form SR, on the other hand, SR stands for, can you guess? Sound recording. This form is going to be used for the actual sound recording or a recorded performance. If you're the single owner, the single person involved with the creation of the work, then um, both the composition and the sound recording, you can use that form SR to register the copyrights for both if you are the only person involved in creating that work. This is because if you're a like a solo artist, you are the only person involved, you own all of the copyrights to that work. But if you're maybe in a band or you have co-writers or if someone helped you in writing or creating this work, they will also have some ownership or interest in the copyrights and those details need to be included on the application too. So we're gonna complete this application. It's gonna ask for information about the author, the creator of the work, dates of the work, and the title of the work as well. So you wanna make sure you fill out the form accurately and completely. Now, again, I mentioned this in my last copyright video, but the Copyright Office has tons of helpful resources on their website, lots of guides and publications that give tons of information. So if you're trying to do this yourself and you get a little hung up or you don't know what to do, go through the Copyright Office website because you're gonna find some helpful information there, I promise. So we're gonna then submit the application and pay a registration fee. The exact fee is going to vary, depend. I think it's somewhere between maybe 45 to $85, something like that. And then we're gonna to have to make a deposit of the work. This can be either by uploading a digital file like an MP3 or a WAV file. And the deposit is going to uh, change depending on whether the work is published or unpublished. If it's an unpublished work, you have to make one deposit, deposit one copy to the Copyright Office. If it's published though, we need to make two deposits, so deposit two copies of the work, and it's going to have to be the, the best edition of the work as well. So then we got all that taken care of and we're gonna submit the application and then the Copyright Office is going to assign someone to review the application and all of the materials, make sure it's eligible for copyright registration and make sure all the info there that they need is accurate and complete. This process takes some time. It varies a lot, generally around three to nine months, but again, there's some wiggle in there. Then assuming everything goes as planned, the Copyright Office will register the copyright and issue a beautiful certificate to you, which they, you can then use as proof that you do indeed own the copyrights to your music. And there you go, congratulations. You have successfully registered the copyrights and protected your music and your musical art. Of course, the work doesn't completely end there. The Copyright Office isn't going to enforce copyrights for us. We need to monitor, keep an eye out for unauthorized use of our copyrights, of our work, so we can take proper action to, you know, maybe make sure that doesn't happen anymore or make sure it doesn't happen again, maybe get some damages out of it, that sort of thing. So you've got to stay vigilant with that. And of course, if you see something that you're concerned about, it's best to consult with an attorney to determine the best way to handle it. 
And of course, with all of this, copyrights, trademarks, everything I talk about, it is always best to consult with a lawyer in general and have a lawyer help you through these things because there are little details that may not be totally apparent what it means. We may not know to, how to handle. So best thing you can do is work with an attorney if you're trying to get copyright registration. That's all for this episode, folks. If you learned a thing or two, give me a thumbs up, won't you? Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell so you get notified when I post a new video. And again, check the description for links to additional information and resources. If you want a little bit more of a deep dive into copyrights generally, check out my last video all about the copyright registration process. I will put it right here and I'll meet you over there. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Aiden Durham and I'll see you next time.